This is Richard with JR Propo DeForce Aviation, and this is the third in a series of videos designed to help the viewer program their Elite or Matrix transmitter for electric flybarless helicopter use. I know I say this every time, but safety is a primary concern. The programming of the radio, which we show in this video, is to be done only with the transmitter on. Models should not be powered up and the motor should not be connected. This video will include checking that the dual rate and expo functions have been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch, checking that the gyro gain function through the gyro sensitivity screen has also been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch, and the initial programming of throttle hold. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to check to make sure the dual rate and expo functions have been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch. From the home screen, we're going to touch the menu button. And we're now back in the first page of the function menu screen. The dual rate and expo button is in the lower left hand corner of the screen. Touch it. A small window has now appeared in the middle of the screen that says confirm servo hold. Touch the yes button. The dual rate and expo screen has now appeared. At the upper left of the screen is a box with the word aileron in it. This tells you that the changes made in this screen will affect the dual rate and expo function for the aileron axis only. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the flight mode switch and observe the position indicator here. As we flip the flight mode switch through its various positions, we'll see the position indicator change. Step one. Position one. Step two. Position two. Normal. So this tells us that the dual rate and expo functions for aileron have been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch. If we want to go a little further in proving this, there's a switch icon or button to the right of the aileron box. We're going to touch that. We're now on a page with columns of switches. We're interested in the first three on the left, labeled position zero, position one, and position two. If you touch any one of these first three switch icons, it will take you to the switch select screen. We're just gonna to touch the first one. Now on the switch select screen, we can see that the box in the upper left, which has the words flight mode in it, has a check in it as well. That would be right here. This confirms that the dual rate and expo function for this flight mode has been automatically mapped to our previously chosen flight mode switch. We're gonna hit the back button twice to return to the dual rate and expo screen for aileron. Okay, we still wanna check the dual rate and expo functions for elevator and rudder. So we're gonna to touch the box with the word aileron in it a small window has now appeared in the center of the screen with aileron, elevator, rudder, and auxiliary in it. We're going to touch elevator. Now we're not going to go all the way back in and touch the switch icon here and do the checking we did for aileron. All we're going to do here is observe the status of the position indicator as we flip the flight mode switch. Step one. Step two, normal. Expo function for elevator has been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do in here is we're gonna to check to make sure the dual rate and expo functions for rudder have been mapped to the flight mode switch. So we're gonna to touch the box where it says elevator. Again, we have the small window in the center of the screen. We're gonna to touch the rudder button. Now we see the dual rate and expo screen for the rudder function. Again, we're gonna just look at the position indicator as we take the flight mode switch through its various positions. Step one. Step two. Normal. Okay, we've now confirmed 
that the dual rate and expo function for aileron, elevator, and rudder have been automatically mapped to the flight mode switch. Okay, we're going to press the back button on the face of the transmitter to back out. We're once again on the first page of the function screen. We're going to touch the arrow over at the right of the screen to get to the second page. And here we find the icon or button for gyro sense. We're going to touch that. The now familiar window which says confirm servo hold has appeared. We're going to touch yes. And in here we see the gyro sense or gyro sensitivity screen. But this shows what the gyro percentage is in each of the flight modes and also whether the gyro is set for heading hold or rate mode. Now, in this case, N for normal stands for rate mode and we'll see it change to S, which is stunt mode, which is actually heading hold mode. So let's look at the position indicator. It says position zero. We're gonna flip the flight mode switch to position one. Step one. Okay, it's changed. And just as a side note, we can see that automatically because of the basic programming in the transmitter, this column has changed from a column of N's to a column of S's. So this would be in stunt mode or heading hold mode. I'm gonna flip the switch again. Step two. Position indicator says position two or stunt two. So we now know that the gyro gains through the gyro sensitivity menu have been mapped to the flight mode switch. Normal. Okay, we're gonna hit the back button on the left face of the transmitter and return to the first page of the function menu. Okay, now we need to go to the system menu. So we're gonna go up to the top of the screen and touch the system button. We're now in the system menu screen. In the bottom row toward the right is the flight mode setting button. We're gonna to touch that. Now we've already set up the first three flight modes. Now we're gonna set up throttle hold. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but throttle hold is used to keep the motor off for those times when you're carrying the model to or from the pad or when you're auto rotating. We're gonna go down to the fourth row where it says hold and we're gonna to touch the switch icon to the right. We're now on the switch select screen. We could select any of the unused switches for throttle hold, but we're gonna select in this case, switch L, which is on top of the transmitter toward the back, toward the right. This is a two position switch. I'm gonna to touch the image of the switch. We now have the familiar local view of the switches in the vicinity of switch L, we're gonna to touch that. We're now in the familiar smaller window, which is L at the upper left for switch L. To the right are two buttons, position zero and position one. We want to activate throttle hold when the switch is flipped toward us, toward the face of the transmitter, which is position one. We're gonna to touch that. The check in the position one box tells us that the throttle hold function will be activated when the switch is in position one. We're gonna to touch the red X to back out. In this local view of the switches on the upper right side of the transformer, we see that switch L is now highlighted in red. We're gonna hit the back button to back out. We're now in the switch select screen again, which gives us the larger view of all the switches. We can again see that switch L is highlighted in red. We're gonna press the back button on the face of the transmitter to back out. And we're now back on the flight mode setting screen. We're gonna press the back button on the face of the transmitter one more time. And we're back to the system menu. Now we wanna check to make sure that throttle hold is really doing what it's supposed to do. So from the system menu, we're gonna to touch the function button at the upper left to return to the function menu. We're gonna to go to the lower left here and look at the monitor button. So we'll touch that. Now this is a series of graphs telling us what the position of the various channels are. We're gonna look at the throttle position Note there's a vertical bar here that moves as I move the throttle. We're now in the first flight mode, which is normal mode. 
and we've got the throttle about half up. You can see the throttle position indicator is right in the center. We're going to flip the throttle hold switch. Uh -huh. We can see that the throttle position has now dropped to zero, actually slightly less than zero. I'm going to turn throttle hold off again. Uh -huh. We're going to go to stunt one. Stunt one. And we're going to move the throttle again to show that it's moving. I'm going to raise it a little higher here, and then we're going to hit throttle hold again. Uh -huh. Again, the throttle hold position has now gone to slightly less than zero. Turn throttle hold off again. Stunt one. We're going to flip the switch into stunt two. Stunt two. And we're going to move the stick around again to show that the throttle is active. We're going to hit throttle hold one more time. Uh -huh. And again, when we hit throttle hold, the throttle went to slightly less than zero, which is exactly what we want. Now we're going to hit the back button on the face of the transmitter. We're back in the first page of the function menu. We're going to touch the arrow to the right of the screen to go to the second page of the function menu. We're going to look for the throttle hold button, which is to the upper left of the second page of the function menu. We're going to touch that. We're now in the throttle hold screen. In this screen, we can set the actual position of the throttle channel for throttle hold. The default is negative 5%, which has worked for me on just about everything. But if we want to change it, let's say we want to increase it to negative 10%, we touch the button. Now we have a small window which says hold position in the upper left. And it's got 5% in the center. And there's a series of buttons to raise or lower the throttle position in throttle hold. If we want to go to, say, a negative 10%, we go to the lower row of arrows and just touch the arrow until we get where we want. We hit the red X here to back out, and we can see the hold position is now negative 10%. I'm going to go back in here and set it back to negative 5% because in 90% of the cases that seems to work very well. Hit the red X to back out. Hit the back button on the face of the transmitter to back out. Hit it again. And we're back on the home screen. In the next video, we're going to go a little further in, into throttle hold. We're going to set the dual rate, expo, and gyro settings for throttle hold to mirror those in stunt one. Thank you.